Hey everyone, this is part two of our Order of Chaos set preview. I just wanted to let you guys know that um, <clears throat> it's taking me a little bit longer to kind of do some research on each thing, so that's why this is coming to you kind of near the end of the week instead of the beginning. I'll try to have the next one up January 2nd or 3rd. Anyway, I um, wanted to bring this... I really want to focus on wind-up rat. I can't focus it on enough. Uh, wind-ups are very good. People just don't believe in them, and they're also very cheap. Was, you know, except for, you know, Zen mains. Okay, the, the reason this guy's broken is, it says, during your main phase, you could target one wind-up monster in your graveyard, change it to defense, which is good, and it's supposed to summon that target in face-up defense, which is good. And you can only use it once while it's on the field, just like the other wind-ups. Okay, uh, I'm sure you've already heard this, and for those of you that haven't, here's why wind-ups are going to be ridiculous. You already know Zen Mains is a 3-star, or excuse me, a rank 3. So, there's also one coming out that I'll talk about later called Wind-Up Zen Mighty. Here's what you do. You uh, bring this guy out, you need to have something, another 3-star in your grave, like a, let's say Wind-Up Dog would be a great one. And you use his ability, use Rat's ability to bring out Dog. Okay, then you exceed summon into this guy, Zen Mighty. What he does is once per turn you can detach an XYZ material from the card and special summon a windup from your hand or deck. So you detach Dog and you special summon another Rat. Then Rat's ability activates because it's a new Rat. And he brings out the dog again. Then you bring out another Zen Mighty. Then you detach the dog again. Then you bring out a rat. Then you bring out another Zen uh, dog. And maybe you make a Zen Mains instead of a Zen Mighty. But also, Zen Mighty has another ability. Uh, when a face up wind up monster you control is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can detach a material from uh, this card to target that monster and add it back to your hand. So you can kind of get see some ridiculous combos that can be made. So guys, I can't stress it enough. Get those wind-ups and get them while they're cheap. Okay, next card, Wind-Up Honey. It is a searcher. It's a one-star searcher, which is a little bit strange, but, you know, put it face down, and it helps you keep things consistent. So good card. I don't know how many will be played. I'd say, you know, one or two, maybe just one. Okay, on to the evils. Um, Eva Tiles, which we know help bring out the Eva Soars. Um, this guy's okay, another one star. He's kind of like the, the honey above. He's a searcher. Um, but he goes to your hand instead. So, yeah, not real, not crazy about it, but it may be needed. So, it is a common, so keep your eye on that. This guy is broken as can be. I can't stress it enough. The only issue with him is he's 1600. And he has to destroy a monster by battle and stay on the field for his effect to work. It's really not that big a deal, though, you know. Um, there's, you know, Shura or other cards that when you attack and you destroy, then their effect activates. Uh, I think Jurek, um not Velo, the one where you tribute off, you tribute him off the draw. Um, he has to destroy or something like that. So it's not like this is the only effect in the world that's like this and it's bad it's actually good you know you can play burn of the mighty if you want to uh, to help this guy kind of be stronger but his effect is ridiculous after he destroys the monster by battle you tribute him off and which it doesn't say where so you can tribute him to remove from play if you know your opponent's playing macro or something special summon two level six or lower fire dinosaur type monsters which also of course would include um, your Jurex, you know, you can bring out Hera or any of them, uh, with the same name from your deck. So this is kind of like a rabbit. It really is, guys. Um, and the effects are negated and they get removed from play during the end phase, which you don't give a crap about because you're going to be exceeding with them. Okay? I mean, how... how ugh. This guy's going to make things redonkulous. I mean, there's even some six stars coming up that I'm going to show you. And what you're going to probably want to make is you bring out two sixes and you make this guy. Evils are sold a. Or, or solid. So, solid sold. Who gives a crap how he's pronounced? He's good. Okay. So, sorry about that. Um, you're just going to want to have to focus on do you want to play a Jurek Evil mixture? Do you want to 
use this guy kind of like a rescue rabbit if you can't afford him and uh, you know try to go for two four stars to Meglogia I mean I, I don't know you got to decide on what card you have and uh, you know do you have a tuner already on the field and you just want to play a Jurak build and bring out your big Jurak synchro so pick this guy up I don't know if he's going to get upgraded to a super I think he should um, here's one of the six stars I wanted to talk about. He's actually really good, even though he has no attack. <laughs> 100 attack and 2400 defense, which is not horrible, but most likely you're going to use him for his ability and uh, with the guy above. Um, God, I can't remember his name. Castaneria. Okay, sorry. So this is Sol, Evil Soul Elios, and he is fantastic because when he is special summoned by the effect of an evil tile, which would be uh, Castaneria, whatever the hell I just said, you can special summon a level 6 or lower fire dinosaur type from the hand. So it is from your hand, not from your deck, but still pretty good. And it will cover pretty much anything in your deck because you should only be running level 6 or lower, in my opinion. Um, here's the other level 6. Uh, when he's special summoned by the effect of an Eva tile, he loses attack. So, eh, he's still, you know, 1900 beater. But it's mainly just to exceed with, so whatever. Okay, Hanzo, the big bad ninja. I do love this guy. He's amazing. He's dark. He's a four star. He's 18. He's a warrior. All the great things. So, when he is normal summoned, you can add a ninjutsu art card from your deck to your hand, which uh, I can't stress. Those things are ridiculous, especially freezing and some of the other effects or the other traps. So, focus on that. Um, let's say you have gold out or you find a way to flip these guys down. Um, there's uh, more than one way. So when this card is flipped or special summoned, which there are ways to special them as well, you can add one ninja monster from your deck to your hand just like a Stratos. Except you can't grab himself. Gotta pick those up, guys. Mass Ninja Bisu, uh, good card. I don't know how much play he'll get. I think he will get some because he's four star. He's got 1800 defense and he's got a good effect. Um, if you control a face up ninja monster, except. A Bisu, in other words, not himself. You can return Magic and Trap cards your opponent controls to the hand, so he's like a Tornade, but only equal to the number of face-up ninjas you control. So, um, you know, let's say this guy's out, you have one other ninja out, you can bounce one card. Still, bouncing one card is bouncing one card. Still good. Um, and then if you play the Go-Go Gal, the Gallant Ninja, he can attack directly. I'm not sure if you want to do that. Here's the golden guy. I really thought he was going to be an ultra or at least a rare or something, but I guess not. Um, as you can see, I try to give you the English names and the English picture, but sometimes I won't because either I don't like the name or I couldn't find it or the picture quality was crappy or whatever. Anyway, with this guy, um, you return. Let's see. Once returned, you can send one trap card from your hand to the graveyard, which you will be playing most likely quite a few of the ninjutsu arts, so that shouldn't be much of a problem. He's got 1,800 defense, which is good. He's light, so you know you. I guess you could play, you know, BLS or something with him and Hanzo being light and dark. So maybe you could figure that out. Um, you know, it's kind of like the six samurai; they each have kind of each different attribute. Um, anyway, you you send a trap card from your hand to the graveyard. Special summon a level four lower ninja monster from your deck, and face up defense or face down defense. So he is one of the keys, and I would make sure to grab as many of him as you can. Not really sure how much I like this guy. You know, he's a four star 1800 spellcaster, so that's good. Um, he doesn't really have anything to do with the ninjas, but uh, once per turn, you declare a card type, magic or trap, and target one set card in your opponent's magic or trap zone. You look at it, and if you were correct and it is the declared type, it can't be activated this turn. So it's a one card cold wave. I don't know. It's it's free, and it's an 1800 four star, and it's I guess it's Kaiku. It looks like Kaiku to me, or Kaiku's ugly brother, because it looks like it's the other side of the face. So anyway, uh, there it is. <laughs> um, this is kind of cool. A lot of people really like the familiars, and um, so he's 1800 and 50, which is nice. He's dark, which is nice, and the effect's not bad. I mean, you special summon this card from your hand by sending. One dark, the dark charmer, which, you know, of course you're going to play all the charmers and familiars. And a dark monster you control to the grave. So, not the easiest thing to get out. But when his card is special summoned that way, you can add a level 3 or 4 light spellcaster type monster from your deck to your hand. 
Um, if this card was special summon that way, it has piercing. I don't like this card that much. I would love to hear why it's really good because it seems so specific. I mean, you got to send Dark, the Dark Charmer, and Dark. That's hard enough to do. Then when you special summon, you can only add a very specific level 3 or 4 light spellcaster, which I guess they're all spellcasters, so that's not a problem, um, to your hand. So you're not getting a lot of speed. You lost two cards. You gained one. I don't know. Well, it says I guess you could special summon from the deck. So that is, that's a little better than I thought. Okay. I'm sorry. I should have read that better. This guy, I love the art on this. It's, you know, Dark Blade. I don't know if you guys remember that. Um freaking awesome and it's got the dragon that he used you know in the uh the union monster from back in the day not a bad card either 1800 four star dark once per turn you can banish a dark monster in your graveyard which is not a problem to target one level four lower light monster your opponent controls and just steal it and make it an equipped card to this card so that's good if you're playing against light sworn or something else um, if this card would be destroyed, you can destroy one of those cards instead. So, anti-lights, in other words, you know, agents, uh, whatever, um, fables, so. I love this card. I pray that the discarding a fiend monster is not a cost because I would think it would say once per turn you can discard one fiend monster to have this card gain 500, but it may not. So we'll figure that out. I try to do some research. It might be a cost if it is, and this isn't going to be quite as good for Dark World as I had hoped. But if it is, if it does discard correctly, that's going to be ridiculous. Um, because also, uh, when this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can target one of your removed from play Dark Monsters and add it to your hand, which is <laughs> so very, very good for Dark Worlds. And this guy is a fiend, so you could kind of splash him in there. I don't know if you'd want to because, you you know... Graphite doesn't work with this guy, but, um, you know, Raven's in there, so there are ways to to get things happening. I just really like this guy. I also think the picture is hilarious. Birdman. Um, good dragon card. I like this. This is a four-star dark, even though it's a fire. I thought that was kind of strange, but the art's cool. The name's cool. Once per turn, you can discard one card, which is good for dragons, to target one dragon-type monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. Um. I'm sure Dragon Doula's girl is going to be loving this, but um, enough about that. Check this card out. Have it ready, um, you know, at the uh, sneak preview. Save them up, and then that way, when the when the uh, the new Chaos Dragon Structure deck comes out, I blanking on the name, it will. Uh, hopefully, this will help. Here's another dragon, but this is a Gemini dragon, uh, eight star. So I'm pretty sure you're going to want to have it thrown to the grave and. Special summoned with uh, with something else instead of just double tributing. That's kind of crazy to me. Once per turn, um, you can send one face up magic and trap you control to the graveyard. Destroy, you know, it gives you a, a heavy storm. So I don't know what you'd really, you know, I guess you could do decree or you could burden of the mighty or, you know, whatever. Uh, but it's a face up. Call the Haunted would be kind of ridiculous. Um, kind of could be, I don't know, a fun combo. The turtle that once would be called God, um, people, a lot of people talking about this. It's a five star, unfortunately. If it was anything less, it'd be way too good. While this card is face up on the field, neither player can special summon monsters with 1800 less attack, and that's pretty much everything. <laughs> it's really un unfair. This might actually get some play. It is a water. Um, I don't know. There is another one that's similar. It's a one star, so we can. I'll try to do some research on that later. I don't think it's in this set, though. Twin Photon Lizard, good card. I, you know, I don't know if Photons would ever want to run Poly. If they could make this just a contact card, which, you know, they might. It, it kind of reminds me of, like, a, a you know, the GB Contacts and and things like that, Chimeratech Fortress, but uh, who knows? It doesn't say that it doesn't require Poly, so it probably does, which means it may not get any play, but I kind of like it. I guess you could run Defusion, even though it has a Defusion effect already built in, but enough about that. Um, Utopia Ray, cover card, um, a lot of people talking about it. It requires three level fours, and they have to be light, which is a pain, but um, the greatest thing about him is if you have Utopia out, you can uh, put this guy on top, because it says that you can also exceed summon this card by using one Utopia. You control as the material. 
um, XYZs attached to that monster also become materials of this car. So in other words, if you have a Utopia with one or two materials already on it, you drop Utopia Ray on top of him, and the materials that were on Utopia now count for um, number 39, or C39 Utopia Ray. Um, his effect is you can detach one material from this card, it gains 500 attack, which it's already at 2500, so it's really, it's boss. And one monster your opponent controls loses a thousand until the end phase. So in other words, this guy is going to be bigger than everything on the field all the time. Um, you must have a thousand life points or less to activate and resolve this effect. So that's not good. But you know what? He's 2500 and, you know, I guess in, in a tight spot you may want to think about doing that. So, um, And here we finally are to the armored ninja... Exceeds, which I love. Um, there's the Super and the Ultra is coming up next. Two, level four warrior type monsters. In other words, anything. Real easy. I mean, heck, you could splash this into other stuff if you just had to. But it's rank four, 2200, so it's not bad. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card to target one face up ninja monster you control. This turn, that monster can attack twice during each battle phase. So, I don't know why they didn't put the battle phase, but whatever. I think, uh, I think if you, you know, you, you pick the right guy and, I mean, God, this, what, he can target himself, can he? So that's ridiculous. Um, but also he can target this guy coming up right here. The Crimson Shadow Armor Ninja, just a freaking sweet art, awesome name, and he's 2,400, I think, and two level fives, which is not, you know, not hard to do, I guess. Um, because as you already know, with the ninjas we talked about last video, they change their levels. Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card. This turn, face-up ninja monsters in the field cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects, which is very good. Um, this effect can only be activated during your opponent's turn. So um, it can be activated, excuse me, during your opponent's turn. So it can, it's a, you know, use it however many times you want. As weird as it sounds, I kind of wish it used three just so it could have three uh, materials. <laughs> so good. All right, guys, there we go. I'm going to shut this off quickly because the video is long enough. And tune in next week for video number three when we go over, um, you know, the rest of the uh, the third half, third half, <laughs> third quarter of the uh, the new the cards and maybe talk about some exclusives. So thanks for watching and peace out. Click that like button.